transfer special time with Distillery. We move into season four and I'm starting to feel with the squad we've got that we're stronger than ever before. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 27 and the start of season 4 from Lifting Spirits with me, Daniel. We are back today with Distillery to reflect on what is a pretty spectacular transfer window. We've bolstered the squad, we've got more depth than ever before and the home screen, I think it only gives away one of the new sign-ins but I'm sure that's enough to get the juices flowing. It was certainly enough to excite me. If you're looking forward to finding out all the players we fought in and see our first game of the season at home to Dundaler in the league then please do put a thumbs up on the video. I'm really, really hopeful now that we can push for the playoffs again and that maybe if we get there it will be a slightly different finish this time. Before that though, we've got to talk very quickly about the league makeup this year because you can see in the league, no Nuri, yes Porter down. Porter down are in, they come down in the playoff. So if we had got through, Porter down possibly the easier game on paper. I guess we'll find out later this year. And then the other side that came down from the top tier is Dungan and Swifts. They will be pretty strong opposition. But we'll take a look at all of that stuff a bit later on. For now, we have got a lot of transfer news to reflect on. Some good, some bad, some indifferent. Let's start with the players that have left. So there's actually only a couple of players that have formally left the club. Most of them are ones where we've either not been able to renew loans or they're going to be out of contract, etc. But the first one is the most annoying one for me because I mentioned it in the season review last time out. Mark McKee is the original I wanted to take us to the top tier. As it is, he decided to leave over training facilities again, doing my head in in FM23. He's now wanted by other clubs. Miola Park It's going to go down to the third tier. I just don't get it. So we'll wait and see what happens with him. I have looked at getting him back a couple of times. All of them, he said, no, not interested in any circumstance. Don't really know why. Let's go back to the transfers out because there is one player that's left the club and that is Colin Robinson, a youngster on loan. He's gone to the police service of Northern Ireland, needs some more football this year because we've strengthened the squad. And I'm hopeful that towards the end of this month, he'll be the first of many young players going out on loan. You can see there's loads of players in there. There's a few more beforehand as well. But I do very quickly want to mention some of the others that might be going on because Darren Mallon is the next of the young players who may be leaving on loan. He went out to Crew United last year, did all right. He might be going again this year. And Diego McGann, it looks like he's going to Bambridge because they want him on a free. He's not really featuring for us. And to be honest, he's now an emergency backup, which is a great indicator of how much we've improved. You've seen from the other screens, we've got quite a lot of players coming in. So let's get through them. Let's look at the other bits as well, because there are still a couple of bits of bad news to come. But overall, we can have no complaints. So let's go back to the end of last season. Four sign-ins before the turnover of the year. One name that was with us last year. One name that's very familiar I'm excited about. But some of them hidden behind my head so you can't see them. The first man in was James Convey. He came on the 21st of May on a free. And you know what? He's a real class act. Now, I went for him for a few reasons. One, he's only 23. So he's a youngster. He can still improve. You can see he's training well already. Lots of senior experience without being old. So he's still improving in training. He's got five-star potential. He can play up front. He can play left wing. And he can play attacking mid. Crucially, he's good on the wing in terms of pace, technique, off the ball movement. He's good up front in terms of finishing. And he's just a really solid all-rounder. So with Mark McKee going, I initially looked at him as maybe a striker. We have perhaps Jordan Jenkins in behind. But we knew Johnston was going. We didn't have a left winger. So he gives us versatility and he gives us quality. Whichever way it is, he'll be involved with regularity. Looking further down though, we've got some more additions to get excited about because Sebastian Beck returned on loan for another season. He is an 18-year-old German midfielder. We know everything he can do for us and he will continue his professional development here. Very good centre midfielder. We know he's got the quality to play alongside Levinston and we know that we're going to miss Beck a few games a season because he's playing youth international duty. Don't know why it keeps going back to this season's transfers, but... 
The next addition is basically our replacement for Craig Farquhar, who we couldn't get back on loan again. That man is Aidan McDowell. He is a loan player from Larne. We had Kiel Reid there last year. This time, we've got Aidan McDowell, a left-footed centre-half with three-and-a-half-star ability. I mean, look at him physically. Again, I'm looking at those set pieces at the back stick. Are oh, you going to be out ahead a few in for us? Good in the tackle, decent positioning. Just a good centre-half at this level. So really happy to have him. He's better than Farquhar was. The only issue is he's a natural left-footer. Orkin prefers to play on the left. And you'll see a bit later on another one if you haven't spotted the name already. It does leave us very left-sided heavy when it comes to centre-halves. But either way, a good addition. And he was joined by another name we were familiar with. And that man on the same day turned out to be a very good day for new additions. Leon Boyd is back. I cannot wait to have him back in the team. Yes, only three-star ability by this team, but great anticipation, accelerates, good finisher, good header of the ball. And we saw what he's done in previous seasons. He had a poor year with Bangor last year, but with us, he came in and scored six in 11, helped us to a top half finish when we were struggling in the third tier, then went on loan to Ballyclare the year after, was top scorer in the second tier. Then last year went to Bangor. They were poor, but he did okay, got a few goals. I really think he's going to be a star for us. And you know what I'm like, he's probably going to start regardless. Convy may be slightly better on paper, but we'll find a way if we can. Leon Boyd is in, Leon Boyd is training well, and he's here permanently on a contract. That moves us on to this year though, and there are familiar names throughout. Three players on loan that we've had here before. One player you'll recognise if you follow the Twitch streams with Woken. And a few new additions too, including a transfer target from years gone by. Overall, I don't know how I'm going to fit all of these into an 11. And some of them, particularly the last three loan players, I didn't really know we'd be able to get until quite late on. But it gives us one hell of a bit of squad depth fear. Let's go to the first one, which is Oren Crow. He comes on loan from Cork City till the end of the year. That's when he's out of contract at his parent club. Great natural fitness, brilliant determination, likes a long shot, good on the ball, centre midfielder with bundles of ability, good as a number 10 as well. Something with Mark McKee going, we've got to be aware of. Overall, a really top level player for us. Massive potential, good ability, and hopefully someone we can convince to stay here for the long term. Next up is Darius Ruhi, a player who I think we tried to sign in the first season and the first summer. Is he the one that went to Ballyclare? Yes, he was. So he is a 26-year-old number 10 and striker. Not the best centre forward because he can't really finish or run. But I look at him as a number 10 and he's got bundles of technical ability. It's a bit of a different type of player, more of a playmaker, more of a creative spark. If we're a goal down with 20 to go, bring him on, give the ball to him and see what he can create. The through balls, the vision, the passing range, the first touch. Technically, he's probably the best player at the club. So delighted to have him in with squad depth as well. 26, a bit more experienced, but by no means over the hill. And he was joined by Michael Keyes on the same day. He is a right back at 21 years of age. A young player from the Republic of Ireland had played a couple of games for Dundalk. And he's probably the best right back at the club. Doesn't mean he's going to play ahead of McGill straight away. His positioning's not great. There's a few things I don't like. But physically he's very good. The key technical attributes are okay. And overall adds depth. Again, he's on a pay as you play. So it doesn't really matter if we just use him in the cups. And then we start to get to the familiar names. Three loan signings that we had here last year, I didn't think we were going to get and we weren't able to negotiate for before, but just give us one hell of a team now. We've got first, Chris Johnston, rejected a permanent move to us to go to Glen Torren, and then he got sent on loan with no wage contribution. So for the long term, not great, but definitely first choice left winger. He comes straight in with three and a half star ability, Bar his early sending off last season, had a really good year for us. So he is a crucial part of our first team plans. Second up, KLM Reed in from Larn on loan. Good defender. We know the quality he's got. Can play left back, can play centre half, and he's got bundles of ability in both. The only issue, as I mentioned earlier, both him and McDowell on loan from Larn are left footers. So someone's going to have to sacrifice a bit. But getting to January, I didn't promise a position for Kiel Reid because if Dylan McLean leaves, still not signed a new deal, he could become our first choice left back. We'll worry about that later though. 130 quid a week wage contribution for him. 
I think maybe the highest at the club. But then we get to the Woken save. And unfortunately, he's nowhere near as good as he is in that career because Reese Grego Cox is in. He comes in to give us an option on the right wing. He's also a centre forward, of course, but not rated anywhere near as well here. If you look at the Woken save on Twitch, his attributes, particularly technically, have probably gone down by three. Now, I think part of the reason for that is because he hasn't had a club in such a long time. He left his team in December where he played a little bit, but not a great deal. Didn't play any in the first half of the second season with Woking either. And then he's not played for another eight months now. I'm hoping, looking at the way he's training, looking at his attribute development at the moment, that maybe we can, at 28, still eke a little bit more out of him. But I don't know if he's past the hill or not. For 60 quid a week, for not having any depth on the right wing, it was worth a gamble. But then, of course, as you've seen after that, We've gone and got last year's first choice. So his game time may be limited because Chris Latifa a week later came into the club on loan. We tried and we tried all summer with no success. He's only here till December. He is out of contract at his club then. Won't discuss terms at the minute. But hopefully a bit like we had with Daniel McGill, as we've had two or three times in this save, we'll be able to get him in come January. Now, that's really positive. I'm sure you'll agree. That's a fantastic summer transfer window. But it doesn't help that we've lost a bit on the staff inside because I mentioned it in the last episode. Sammy Klingham wanted to leave. He didn't rate the squad as a high enough standard for him and he wouldn't sign a new deal. We've still not been able to replace him yet. We did get in another coach though in Connell McVeigh, who's not really a step up yet, but is pretty good. He's got some decent coaching attributes, so we'll do a job for now. And we've still got one vacant space for the assistant manager. Overall though, we're maybe a little weaker than we were. We can't sign a new deal for McConaughey, who as reserve manager is one of our best coaches because they don't want a reserve team manager this year for some reason. I guess it's because they weren't playing games last year. Another problem I can't yet resolve. The finances haven't got any worse and a cup run might help them get better. And we've still got a hundred odd quid on the wage bill if we do find one more gem. So looking at the squad as a whole, we're in a really good position. Six lone players, four of them we've had here before. And the rest of them are permanent and pretty good. Neil Graham might become an issue. He's one that wants to leave. He had an offer from Balamina, but they wouldn't pay us a sell-on clause. And I'm not letting him go without that. If I look at this squad, I think it's top two ready. And I don't know about you, I can't see us not making the playoffs. And I know that's a really arrogant statement. But without an injury crisis, without half of these lads getting recalled or whatever, I just don't see us missing out. Dylan McLean is, of course, still the big issue. Out of contract at the end of December won't discuss terms at the moment. He wants the squad to be significantly improved. I don't know what more I can do to improve it. It's in great shape. Let's go and get through to the season preview. What position is this club expected to finish? I'm saying they have us third at least. Season preview, they have us third. Dungannon, the shortest odds I have ever seen for a title, but we're not far behind Porter down. So maybe that battle for second place is what we're going for again. Some good sides in the league. Queen's University up, expected to go straight back down. But overall, I'm really excited. Dylan McLean is in the team of the year. The season preview Dream 11. But apart from that, it's just a solid squad with good players across the board. So let me know down in the comments where you think we're going to finish. What do you think of the summer we've had so far? I did have a look for George Graham. He's no longer in the game. So 1-0 to the distillery. It might be a thing of the past. Let's go and get into our first game and find out as a few players that we've been chasing have moved on to other clubs. I mean, the fact that we're going for players who have then gone to St Mirren shows how well our recruitment team's doing. What a striker he would have been. But let's go and get into the first match. Leon Boyd may well be making his return. But let's go and pick our 11. Let's see what we can put together. Tweak the set pieces for the new tall players. I'm back in a minute for kickoff. Right then, as you can see, no tactical changes for this season. However, a few changes of personnel. Not as many as you'd expect though, because what I've tried to do for this first game of the season, as I often do in summers like this, is stick with a fairly familiar team. Most players are building their fitness all right, so it's not much of an issue. And then a lot of the new boys are on the bench. What we have got is the returning Leon Boyd in. A new boy in Convy because of course McKee walked. We've got returning loan players in Latifah, Johnston, Becks, Reed at the back as well. 
And then, of course, the rest of the team you probably know well already. So the lineup for today is Connor Mitchell in goal. A back four with McLean and McGill at fullback, Reed and Ork in centre halves. Levinston and Beck reunited in midfield, Latifa and Johnston the wingers, and a new boy Convy behind returning boy Leon Boyd up front. McDowell, Crow, Grego Cox, Ruhi, all new players on the bench, but in still familiarity, Edgar, Chambers and Jenkins all there. Outside the squad today, Foster's had an injury in pre-season, the youth players I'm trying to loan out for their own good, McGann possibly on his way out, and Neil Graham, equally, unhappy at not moving. So it basically picks itself the 18. It's just which way we put the 11. And I've opted largely for players that know the club well. And hopefully, that'll be the right decision. Distillery v Dundela. We've got so much height. We've got so much physicality. Can we take advantage in the first game of the season? Any win would be a good one. 1-0 one to the Distillery. Even more magic. And here we are with a couple of familiar names in the Dundala side. Kieran O'Connor has played in a top tier a fair bit. Jamie McGovern we tried to sign a little while ago in this save. And Brian Healy on the bench. Not worked out for him since leaving us. The good thing for us here is I can look at the bench today for the first time ever in this save and say we have got seven high quality substitutes that can come on. So with the 11 looking good already, let's go and get into the first half. We have to win our home games, no excuses. No helps with the team talk either because we've got no assistant. Hopefully the performance does the talking. Well, 15 minutes on the clock. It's been a quiet start so far, but we know this is going to be a threat this year. Johnston's corner in, it finds McLean. Really good header just over the bar. We've got so many big players. The fullbacks are six foot two. Orkins jumping reach is 16. Keelan Reed is six two as well. Levinston's 5'11, but brilliant in the air. Leon Boyd, six foot, good header of the ball. I mean, it's just a massive side, isn't it? As Mackay comes down the left for Dundala, do not concede a poor goal here. Convy nicks it, the new boy. Gets the ball forward towards Leon Boyd. He makes the challenge, but the ball through was awful. And he's cleared long downfield as far as Orkin. He switched to right centre half now as he's the only right footer back there. Levinston wins a header in the middle. It's a little bit scrappy. And I'm a little bit worried still because defensively we are getting opened up a tad. As McLean wins a header out on the left. The through ball is going to find a one-on-one -on -one, is it? Oh what's going on back there? It hits the woodwork. Keelan Reed and Connor Mitchell in a mix up. Because although Reed's a returning low knee to the game is a new signing. And that's the problem for us. Just going to have a quick look actually from the set pieces because that corner didn't go to the far post. Is that what we were aiming for still? Yes, it is. It just didn't reach. Maybe it's a bigger pitch. I don't know, but it seems a little bit odd with no change. 20 minutes gone, nil nil it is. Both sides have had a good chance. But if you look at the stats, we are the better team. Same issue again though. Are we creating the chances? We've got 10 minutes to half time. We're going to encourage the lads. I'd love to get one up before the break. It doesn't look like it's coming though. And at half time, it's going to be frustration, is it? Johnston picks the ball up on the left hand side, charging forward. In the end, goes back to McLean. Finds Johnston again on the wing. It is the start of the season. It's going to be a few games before we get up to full speed and full cohesion. Though Levinston here, chance to shoot. Jaw oh, tipped onto the bar by Hughes. I thought he palmed it in. But it somehow stayed out the net. Defied the laws of physics is a corner kick. Now what can Johnston do? Find the back post hopefully. Orkins up there. McLean's up. Neither of them win it. And Orkins on a yellow. I don't want him chasing out there. Half time. Nil nil is the score. But Distillery definitely had the better of it. Same old problem though. Not ruthless enough. So let's get through the dressing room. Let's have a chat with these lads. Keep going. We can still win this. Or you've had a lot of shot on target. I'm happy. I'm going to go for that one. The lads are happy, they're delighted, but I need a response. Second half, let's go positive and let's get ourselves the goal as McGill at right back from the goal kick finds Orkin. Switch of play to McLean. They're not pressing us that high, particularly in wide areas, so we've got a chance now to come forward. You can see they're playing the back five with the two holding midfielders. It's basically seven behind the ball at all times. As Latifa on the right delivers for Leon Boyd. That's what we were missing last year with Jenkins. One chance, one goal. Cross into the box. He's playing on the shoulder of the last man. And Leon Boyd is a hero on his return. It's 1-0 to the distillery. And of course, it was always going to be that way. With an hour gone, we will look at a couple of changes. Convy not having the best game on his debut. He'll be replaced by Darius Ruhi. We're also going to bring on Crow for Levinston, who's not quite up to full speed yet himself. And the rest of it, 
I think we maybe wait 10 more minutes. I'm looking at centre half for Orkin on a yellow, but then I've got to play one of the centre halves on the right, and both of those would be left footed. Not that it's saying they really mind where they play. McDowell, no preference either. So do you know what? I'll bring him on right centre half for Orkin. Three changes made. I'll try and get Grego Cox on as well, but all of the new boys getting a debut. 25 minutes to go and here we are with Darius Ruhi getting robbed in possession. That is not what we wanted and he is a little slow on the ball. McGill able to get away though. Are we going to suffer for it? Ruhi gives it away again. It's been a nightmare start for him. Maybe we've gone too early with these changes. We might have done. Kushni scores for one all and I think we have to take the blame for that. The goal came from a run over the right centre half after the number 10 had given it away. And maybe we should have stuck familiar. Maybe we should have waited longer. But at the moment, I might have cost us the game. Though Latifa gets that from a poor goal kick to Boyd. Chance to immediately strike back. Leon Boyd into the box. Shot just over the bar. Let's try and encourage them again. Pick them up. Because at the moment, he's just fallen a little bit flat. We have got familiar names on the bench. And now I'm going to use them. We're going to go. Jack Chambers on for Sebastian Beck. We know what he can do. And then off the left wing, do I go Greg Cox? I think we do. We're going to have an inverted winger on this side in support duty. And then what we're going to do, I don't get to do it often in this save, is I'm going to swap positions with Latifa. Try and confuse the defence a bit. They can both do both roles. And with 15 minutes to go, it's 1-1. We've been the better side, but we've given away a sloppy goal. And now it's whether we can bounce back. As we're 10 left on the clock, we've got the ball at the back with McDowell. He can play out from the back to McLean on the left. Inside to Jack Chambers, the sub, the only familiar sub that's come on today. And Crow gets it wide to McGill. Good football to Grego Cox, released again by McGill. Chance to run down the right. Can you find your woke in form? No, he just goes short. McGill again, though, the skipper. Big switch of play to McLean. Has Latifa down the line, who swapped to the left. Chance to cross Boyd's offside. Doesn't matter if it's in. That goal will be disallowed. A lovely move. Some great football. And hopefully we can create another one. Where Boyd stays on side in the last 10. Because with five minutes to go, there's nothing doing. And while this wouldn't be a bad result, it is a little frustrating. I feel like I've cost us the game. Ruhi was the wrong change in the number 10 roll. And it's cost us. Into three minutes added on. We've gone attacking. We're chasing the win. But we're not going to get it. 1-1. One, one, a little bit frustrating. But we played really well. And the only thing that cost us the result was probably me. So let's go and have a look at the schedule for when we're going to be back. But overall, that's not a bad start to the season. So we start the season with Boyd ending a goal drought from his former club. Latifa shining for Distillery. And to be fair, Dungannon the favourites drew. The favourites for relegation, Queen's University won. So there is all sorts going on early. It's going to be close again. We've just got to get up to speed fairly quickly. I think we're in that race for the top three. It's just whether Porterdown or Dungannon run away with it. Let's go and have a look at the schedule though for when we're next going to be back. Of course, we've got to show deadline day again. And of course, we've got to show Bally Clare because they were the side that battled to the final day for the playoff spot last season. They then collapsed against us for a 6-0 defeat after they'd had the better of us for the rest of the season. So that's a game we've got to show. Of course, there might be a big cup game in the meantime. Fellow second tier side institute in a league cup. I feel we've got the squad to deal with that this year. So if you're looking forward to deadline day, I think it's more going to be about outs than ins at this point and seeing what we can do against Ballyclare, one of our big rivals last year. Then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you think of the signings, the squad depth and that performance and result on the opening day. If you want to stay up to date with the rest of the season, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. Of course, tomorrow we'll be back with our head coach save continuing before this returns in two days time. You can find Find all the key links and playlists, including the Twitch channel up in the eye above. But above my head now is the latest season and the latest club in the head coach this year. Check that one out if you haven't seen it already. And I'll see you back here for transfer deadline day in a couple of days time. <laughs>